What's up guys and welcome back to In The Shop TV. On the last episode, we got rid of our old link bar brackets and welded in some new brackets along with an integral cross member system to make everything work together. Guys, there's a lot of rumors about panhard bars and we're gonna address them and see what the real deal is coming up. Guys, there's still time to enter the 1,000 subscriber giveaway, so if you haven't done so already, comment subscribed in the comments below and you're automatically entered. And we'll pick a winner at random and you'll win a free digital level. But before we get started on the pan-out bar, we have some bridges here that we're gonna weld in right to our step notches right here and get this frame kind of solidified and a bit more rigid. So what I'm doing right now is I'm grinding down the welds on the inside of my step notches, just in the top portion where my bars are gonna mount to. I don't generally like to grind down the welds because it will weaken the structure. However, if we're welding in a bar to this area, it creates almost a fish plate of sorts and it actually strengthens this entire area since we'll have a weld bead going around the bar in a square pattern. So I'm doing that on both sides here and then we're gonna move over to this side. One thing to note is you really wanna be careful to just grind down the weld surface itself and not get into any of the metal on the step notch because then you weaken it further. The measurement that we need on our crossbars are 29 and a half inches. All right, so I've got my first bar held in place with some magnets. And I'm using my digital level to make sure that I have the same exact measurement that I have on my cross member and on my frame. It's 0.4 degrees because my shop floor is sloped 0.4 degrees, so that's actually dead level. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot tack here and attack there just to hold it in place. So I got one bar fully welded in. We're setting up our second bar and I just got it tacked right there and we'll start welding it in now. Same angle on it, looking good. All right, so our bridge bars, as I'm gonna call them, are completely welded on. Our angle held throughout the welding and everything's looking pretty good. Now it's time to focus our attention on the Panhard bar and the rumors surrounding them. Panhard bars, as we discussed, is just a bar that goes from side to side from your frame to your axle to keep your axle from moving laterally, sideways in your frame. That's it, that's all that they do. However, there's some rules that we need to follow. We have to understand that there's gonna be some lateral movement, but if it's set up correctly, the lateral movement will be kept very minimal. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is arc. And one of the first rumors that is you can't use a short panhard bar because when you shorten the distance from the frame to the axle point, you create a larger arc when that axle moves up and down, which gives you more side to side motion. That's true in a sense, but here's the rumor to it. It's not entirely accurate because if you set it up properly where the point of attachment on the frame is even in height to the point of attachment on the axle, even with a short pan bar, the lateral side to side movement will be extremely minimal as well. A lot of people think that you can put a bend in the pan hard bar just as long as the end of the bar is parallel with the ground, but the points are not. In fact, my kit came with a pan hard bar, something like that. So this is meant to be attached to the side of the frame. This is supposed to be parallel with the ground. And then this part dips down and attaches to the axle. Now you could run this this way too, so it's straight up and down with just a ridge in the center of it, which would be much better. The problem with the bar that's attached to the frame on the side and dips down towards the axle is what we just mentioned before, is that the attachment points are not equal to the ground. That's really important. What happens is if our attachment point is up here on the frame and the bar dips down to the axle, which is ironically on many, many different production vehicles, it works, but it, here's why it's wrong. It's gonna create, remember we spoke about an arc, as that bar comes up and down, being that the bottom dips down and the attachment point is higher than it here, it's gonna create excessive lateral side to side movement. Whereas the bar, if you put it with a ridge in the center, it's the same as a straight bar and the attachment points are the same, everything works out good. So the other theory, which is true and not true at the same time, is you wanna run the longest bar possible and that will create the shortest arc, right? Because your attachment points are further apart and as you arc up, you have much less of a movement. Now, that's true, but your attachment points still have to be equal heights off the ground or your geometry is all messed up. In fact, if you run a long bar and your attachment points are not even, you're really gonna sway down and push the axle from side to side when that axle droops or bumps. That's why I'm dispelling the myth of the short bar being no good. You're better off having a short bar where your attachment points have the same exact geometry and the same height off the ground than a really long bar where your attachment points are not even and your panhard bar is crooked. That said, what are we doing with our vehicle? Well, 
again, it came with this pan hard bar. I could run it in this configuration where it's kind of straight up like a hump in the center and it just goes over the differential like that. The problem with that is if I do, if I do it that way, this end link here, this attachment point where it attaches to the frame, um, it's going to have to kind of dip down below where that step notch is and it might create almost a bump stop of sorts on the axle, which I'm really trying to avoid. Um, secondly, it creates a high point here, which might possibly, when the axle comes up, make it rise above those bars that we just installed, those, um, those bridge bars. That's going to be kind of the height of the bed floor, so you don't really want that poking up beyond that point. So again, another piece of my kit I don't think I'm going to use. What I do think I'm going to do is I'm going to use the attachment that they gave us for our pan hard bar that goes to the side of the frame. And I'm going to take another link bar that we have left over from the kit. And I'm going to do a straight pan hard bar off the side of the frame to the front of the 8.8 axle, which has three holes already drilled in it by the pinion that there was like a, a, a balancer there or something like that, or an anti-vibration balancer on the front of it. So I'm going to take advantage of those three holes. It's going to be a little bit more fabrication. I have to build a custom bracket for the side. I have to build a custom bracket for the pinion itself um, to get this to work right. But in the end, I think this is going to be the best bet. It's of a decent length. And it's going to be straight and our attachment points will be the same exact height off the ground and it's going to work out perfectly all right so this is the area we're going to mount our pan hard bar bracket on the axle housing what i'm going to do i've got just a piece of cardboard here is i'm going to make myself a template so here's our basic shape line it up and make sure we're in the ballpark all right so we're going to take this and we're going to transfer it over to a piece of 316 and get that cut out all right, so I went and transferred our shape onto our piece of flat stock. Moment of truth. Yeah. I like that. I'll drop two bolts in there just to hold it in place for the time being. You know what? On second thought, let me take these out and grind off all this mill scale and clean up the metal and get it ready to weld. So what I've done here is I've just got my axle brackets resting in place. The link bar is kind of snugged up in there to hold everything together. Got it propped up with a magnet on the frame rail on that side. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and shoot a couple tacks to hold that in place so we can take the bracket off and weld it all up solid. All right, so our fabricator. We're gonna go ahead and get our link bar bolted in. And all right, so on between the step plate and the frame. So what I'm gonna do is take the opportunity to box this in with a plate, and then mount our bracket to the plate. I've got a boxing plate just kind of clamped to the frame. Plate just kind of clamped to the frame and to the. All right, so we got our plate and cut. And fit up nice, everything's ground down, ready to be welded. I'm gonna go ahead and get that in. All 
I just decided to just cap this off with a little gusset plate right here since this plate was just kind of hanging out here in midair and had kind of a sharp point on it. Uh, you know, this will give it a lot of strength with forces pushing this way on it. Something else that's Sucker super angle. important that I almost forgot. When it comes to the pan hard bar, the height of it needs to be somewhat adjustable. That's why I went with a bolt on configuration over here on the pinion because especially with coilovers, if you're gonna be playing with the ride height, which you're gonna be playing with the ride height at some point, you're gonna be adjusting it up, down, maybe you'll put heavier stuff in the truck, maybe the truck will lighten up, who knows? But you're gonna be adjusting those coilovers. And if you do that, the pan hard bar is not gonna be straight anymore. So that's gonna be something that you're gonna to have to constantly, not constantly, but you may have to move it once or twice or three times or four times or whatever. But if I would have went with a weld on configuration on the axle with the bracket, and welded it to the frame, you're kind of stuck with where it is. So I kind of wanted to have that bolt-on ability so I can kind of shim it, put another plate underneath it, whatever I need to do. I could even drill other holes in that bracket to move it up and down. Really, really important, guys, that you have one end of that pan hard bar be adjustable, especially if you're running uh, you know, suspension that's not static, meaning coilover or you know, airbags too. Digital laser level giveaway that we're doing. Guys, there's still time to win that giveaway that we're doing. We're at, we, I think we need 33 subscribers to get to 1,000. As soon as we hit it, we're going to pick a comment. Uh, subscribe below, and in the previous video, subscribe so you're interested to win. Uh, we should be hitting that pretty soon. Guys, it's going to do it.